Good morning world. How are we doing everybody? It is Wednesday. You are in the paint with Pete Studio with me. Pete on sleep. How are we doing everybody? Um, so yeah, just got some tunes on. I've got my studio set up. Take two minutes just to get yourself a pen and some paper um, and a little bit of imagination. I've got myself a brew and some water here as well. So yeah, two minutes and we're going to get started on our lettering day. So as it's lettering day, uh, we will always cover the bubble font. So as you can see behind me, we are going to make our weekly uh, nameplate out of the bubble font. So if you've got any paper or card or anything, uh, we're going to basically draw. I'll tell you what we're going to do in a minute, but um, we are going to cut some stuff out. So if you've got some scissors, uh, please be careful with them. If you need a hand, uh, give whoever you need a shout. Uh, but yeah, basically we're going to go through the, the block structure for a letter, the bubble structure. We're going to do some handwriting work, and then we're going to talk about alter egos. Um, so that's alternative ways of thinking or different names that you can give yourself. So my alter ego, just turn a shout out to Pro P, um, I just turned Pro down. Um, so my alter ego is P Obsolete. So that is a name that I've come up with that I can then operate under. So I can work under, I can put a different hat on and become P Obsolete. And that helps me and fuels drawing and painting and hosting and everything else. So I can dive into that alter ego alternative ego so alternative character um, and then work into that so we're going to work on those as well so if you've ever had a silly nickname funny nickname um, whether it's your rap name or a kind of graph name they're very easy ways of thinking about giving yourself a different name so if you were a graffiti artist what would you be called if you were uh, a rap uh, an MC or a rapper what would you uh, give yourself as a name we can use those silly nicknames today um, so again, my name is Pete Obsley, shouts to uh, Noodle Nancy as well. So you can come up with silly little nicknames and we're going to make a nameplate for them. Okay, let's just get this side. Uh, we're also going to create, the first thing we're going to do is handwriting. So we're going to play on handwriting a little bit. Then we're going to make one of these. Where is he? I don't even have one, I thought I had one. Mine says obsolete, I'll show you these in a sec. Um, but I want to make... Uh, collectively, I want us all to draw a paint with and then your name, okay? So my name is Pete, so you are painting with Pete. I'm going to make one for the studio that's going to replace my obsolete because that's just my uh, artistic surname. I need to ground up uh, the sessions, so I'm going to do a paint with Pete. Uh, so we're going to do that, cut it out, and that can be one of our uh, name plates. And then we'll go into our alter egos after brew time. So grab yourself some pens and paper. Just gonna make sure I can see y'all. Hello. Two seconds. Okay, amazing, sorry. My Macintosh is taking a while. Um, so yeah, so let's start with our bubble font. Uh, no, sorry, we're gonna start with our handwriting. I do apologize. So these are really simple. Um, and again, just a really nice uh, way of just having something to do in lockdown. So that's the most wanted one from last week. So there we are. I've also got RIP Sir Tom, Gregor the Vamp. So that's one of my pieces. We did a nameplate for him. We've written We Heart the NHS. Again, that should be on uh, everybody's mind right now. And also Be Kind, that was last week's. Um, I did this on Thursday, but again, just went through the bubble technique, drew it, cut it out, very simple. I'm gonna move Most Wanted. Follow Most Wanted blinds, everybody. Okay, where's my pen? So the first thing I want to do is get my Facebook thing sorted. There we are, okay, cool. Good morning, one and all. So we're gonna practice uh, a little bit of handwriting to start with, but I want it to be a little bit different. So uh, like with last week, we went down the runic way, the runic route, can't say my else, runic route. Uh, shouts to Mrs. Barton for suggesting runic as a typeface uh, or a font. Today I want to take it back to our handwriting, all right? I think everything's going to be black and white um, today, so no colour, just need a pen or some pencils, uh, or a pencil. Um, so yeah, we're going to switch it from the rune to our handwriting, so it's a lot more comfortable. So I want you to just get a nice, kind of, uh, let's warm our hands up, we'll do our hand warm up. So, flat, up, push inside, little push out. Again, loose, so relax, and flat, up. Push, a little bit of winch on this, if anyone's into their martial arts. Push, up, 
round, push, and then a little shake, and then stretch, squeeze, stretch and squeeze. Okay, so handwriting. Um, for this, I just want to see a full page of your handwriting without any spaces uh, in it. So there's no kind of, you're not pausing at all, it's just one long sentence, right? Um, if you can't think of a, a long enough sentence, think of your favorite music, think of your name. You could just write your name a lot if you wanted, just to see what that looks like. But I want you to allow yourself to be a bit loose and just kind of really uh, go for it, all right? Really kind of get in there. So I'm gonna write um, obsolete has you. So that is the obsolete mentality that's been there since day one. So obsolete has you is a, a deal. So if you ever buy anything or like anything from Pete Obsolete, you are part of that um, thing, part of that formula. So you might get a piece of me, but I also not get a piece of you in a dark way, but in a, it's an exchange, all right? I'm swapping something, all right? So I'm gonna go in with my handwriting. And we're just gonna go straight in. So I'm gonna say obsolete has you. That's the obsolete mentality, all right? Again, your name, your full name. If you've got a crazy, uh, amazing name, like a long name, write that as well. But let's just see a full page of writing, all right? No spaces, try not to, uh, stop as well, just keep going, much like in yesterday's, uh, in, sorry, excuse me, in a Monday's doodle session, where we didn't leave, we didn't take the pen off the page, we did these schools that were one line, all of them, I think, uh, just about, so then for our handwriting, we're doing exactly the same, but a little bit more formal, so let's go, I'm just going to write, obviously, how's you, good if your pen work, mate. Obsolete has you, obsolete has you. You can write obsolete has you if you want. But if you get to the end, just keep writing. It's tricking my brain, and uh, I think it might be tripping uh, other people's brains. Um, just to kind of keep that thing going, I'm just getting a better pen for us. Oh, yeah. So you, so obsolete again. Again, really, really good warm up. I'm pausing just to, to breathe and chat. Um, but again, that, really, that consistency is a good patience test as well as your hand and eye coordination. So uh, that's a you, absolute. That's you. If you want to do this really smooth and take a bit of time over it, you're obviously more than welcome to. Um, my pens aren't are failing me today. Um, so yeah, just keep drawing, keep writing. It doesn't matter if it's a bit messy or if it's repeating itself. I kind of like the fact that it's uh, reprinting. Obviously, has you, so arms. Has you. you realize that your memory um, and uh, kind of hand-eye coordination will change ever so slightly. You'll get used to drawing those letters. That's why it's a bit messy. That's all good. Obsolete, how's you? If you wanted to get bigger, just to test it a little bit as well, to see how big you can do it, I might start graduating it. So I'm gonna start making them a little bit bigger at the bottom. We're still using that whole page. We're still using our, a little bit of patience. And also a little bit of hand eye. So obsolete has you. Uh, so obs. Gonna start getting bigger. Obsolete has. See. Let's move. Young Tom. Get bigger. Get bigger. Every single end of the sentence, we get bigger. McGregor. And last one. Lovely. Okay. It's designed to look messy. Much like every other session in the uh, Paint with Peas, we're not here for neat or being um, too delicate about everything. We just want to affect the page 
and do something that's a little bit um, personal to us and a little bit expressive creatively. So again, all we did, I did four or five, maybe six lines um, of keeping it together, which I hope we're all doing in lockdown, that's not a metaphor, and then, um, and then started graduating it. So you'll see that the letters started getting a bit spaced out and depth as well, so the size of them. So we're, changing, we're actually playing with leading and kerning, very technical words for uh, any sort of typography or writing or fonts, um, but that is exactly what we're doing simply by practicing. Like you might not know that you're learning something or that you're practicing something, but you are by accident. That's the best way of learning. I think mistakes are the best way of learning. Obviously, if you make mistakes uh, in a kind of art context, you can constantly work on them. So never ever worry about that. If you make a mistake, we paint over it or we use it, we cut it out, we use it, simple. There's our little handwriting, so we've got our hands warm, right? So I need to get a pencil, he's behind the ear. Nice and sharp. Okay, so we're gonna practice our uh, block to bubble font, all right? Again, if you have seen the, uh, the recent set of the Paint With Pete's, we do this every week. Um, I'm just super keen to make sure <clears throat> everybody, let's grab some coffee, cheers everyone. I just like to make sure that everybody's on the same level um, typographically. Uh, and also so everyone has a font that they can just draw whenever they want, all right? This is what this has been for me. I don't, I haven't really used bubble font until, you know, the start of the year. Um, I've started to change obsolete a little bit, the kind of visuals and some of the work. But this bubble, I really, really like. Um, and I really like just making them and cutting them out and sticking them in my studio. I've got a, an office next door. That's gonna be a wall full of them once we're done. However, let's go. So. Nice new sheet. I'm gonna do the base lines in a different color. Let's find a color. In fact, I'm just gonna do it in black. So if you've got a pencil, this is your time. I'm gonna do them in black just so everybody can see how we turn a letter from a block font into a bubble font, all right? I'm gonna choose a couple of letters maybe from here. So this N was a bit weird, so we'll do an N. Um, and I think the K needed a bit of work, so we're just gonna practice some of the harder letters. Uh, some of the letters that I'm not, you know, I'm happy with them, but I know there's room for improvement. So we create a block. So the first thing, N and K are really good because they're spiky, all right? So an N is one block here, one block going down, and one block going up. Again, breaking those letters into forms, literally. Take away what you think you know about the letters or what you know about letters. Uh, and break it back down into the shapes that they are themselves. Okay, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna do the K as well, we'll do the bubble font next to it. So we do a K, again Ks, a block, and a block, and then a block. Okay, N and K. A lot of the other letters like M um, and L, and all, you know, there's this, Within this block that we create in our block letters is every other letter, all right? Apart from O's and Q's maybe. P's were a little bit different as well. I might do a P on the next sheet. But let's just move NHS over a touch. Excuse me, more. P cards on the floor. That's not where that message lives. I'm just going back up. Yeah. Okay, so then N, all I'm gonna do is basically use my wrist pivot to create circles. So all we do, wherever there's a square edge, we then make it rounder, all right? You can just do that by putting a lump here, and a lump here, and a lump here. And obviously you can start seeing where the lines meet up into that bubble font. Start seeing that. Again with the K, all we're doing is rounding our letters off. So any square edges, we can put lumps on, and then exactly the same for the legs as well, just make sure you're trying to get it, you know, uh, compensating for where the fold will be. All right, this is a way, way better key than that. I should have done this way. Round, 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 round. Okay, so on their own, I draw these as bubble letters on their own without any structure because I've already got it here. So that K, you should be able to see it. Again, pretend these are pencil lines. The round, there's this line. Come over, last one, all the way around, 
Finish a little bit early because it's fatter, rounder. And do exactly the same on that bottom. There's a bubble K, and then we're going to go up to our N. I need to move you a little bit more, mate. Sorry. Okay, and then the N, I'm just going to do the outline so you can see it here. But that's as simple as N. Rounded bottom, rounded top, rounded bottom, and rounded top. We come down, again, a little bit short for the fold. All the way around, nice and round. And then again, same with the uh, compensation here. N to N, there's the K to K. Okay, so... Look at that lovely stuff. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to flip that and we'll do some peas because I know the peas uh, are always quite hard. Uh, we'll do a P, an E, and an S. All right. Uh, okay, P, O, um, and an S. E's are kind of, kind of simple. E's are like ends, just dead fat. And you've just got to look, at, look out for the uh, overlines. So let's do. There he is, there he is. Okay, so I'm just going to turn my page around. Again, I'm pretending I'm using pencil here, everybody. I'll say some hellos in a second as well. So, we'll do a P. So a P is a block with a half circle in it. Okay, and then O. Again, O's are pretty simple because they already look bubbles, they're circles. And um, what should we do? We'll do a Q because it's got a little difference in it. So let's do a Q. So again with a Q, big circle. And a leg. We just flatten them up. So it's got a thicker edge on it. And again, much like the N and the K, we just round everything off. So I'm gonna I'll do I'll show you in a sec on the clear. Like that, and then it's kind of just a little bit fatter. All that. So then, again, those outside lines will should look like this. Okay, so we've got the little kicker here. Again, I'm just kind of tracing in my head. And then we're going to come up. And then again, a little bit fatter on the inside, so we just reduce that space. And we've got a nice, fat bubble cube. For the P, this wasn't exactly right, that's all right. Okay, so again, round, round, round top. Keep that line going around the P. Make them a little bit fatter, a little bit uh, more balloony. So again, that outline, outside line should look something like this. And then we've got the down curve, so there's a curve, and the big P. I always put an X in there, and there's a P and a Q. If you want to see an S, let's try an S. So S. We put our serifs on it. We spoke about serifs in the, uh, I think, the second week. So serif is the stroke at the end of a letter um, on certain fonts, like Times New Roman. We put our serifs in and then link those lines up. I haven't given myself loads of room here. But again, round those lines up. And you've got yourself a little bubble S. I'll show you that now. So again... Just come in round. I always start with this bit, so we go round. Overcompensate with that space. Overcompensate with that space at the bottom as well. P Q S. There we are. Nice and simple. Okay. There we are. So N and K blocked up, and uh, P Q and S just for some of the harder letters. Again, the Q will cover you in letters like uh, O, P with R. They're just adding these little extra extensions to define them as the letters that we know, okay? Okay, so let's get our first uh, nameplate up. So I'm gonna call these nameplates. No, they're not all na always names, but they're messages. So I want you to think of your name I'm going to do Paint with Pete. I want you to create your own mini Paint with Pete studio in your house, wherever you're drawing, garage, shed, cave, wherever you are, car, whatever, boot, or, you know, um, 
I want you to put paint with and then your name, okay? So your official name, my, you know, human name is Pete, is Peter, uh, but Pete is the official name. So I'm gonna put paint with Pete. You can put paint with whoever, paint with Dave, Mary, you know, uh, Susan, whoever you are, let's make a nameplate together. So I'm gonna pencil this up first. You can just sit right on there because I'm going straight over. Lovely. Pencil. Right here. So I'm going to put paint with Pete in pencil. I do it fairly quick so you can see it. I'm going to go around it in a medium black pen and then we're going to cut it out. But again, I need you guys to be involved. So paint with and then your name, please. If you've got a, a long name, if you've got, a, again, you could use an abbreviated nickname or your initials. That's the other idea. Please don't use the nickname we're using in a minute for our alter egos. That's a different uh, head, a different working idea, right? So paint with, and then your Christian name, please. So, I think that's, <laughs> he's already too far over. Where's my little guy gone? I don't know where my rubber is, it's all good. Okay, so, I'm probably gonna take the whole page up. So paint, I'm going to put with over the top so we've got a bit more space for Pete, that's not in the right place either, I can rub them out in a second. Pencils with rubbers on the end, uh, very good invention, really really helpful when you're uh, just drawing and sketching like this, you want to get rid of any ideas that you don't like or lines you're not happy with. Grab a pencil with a rubber on it. Okay, so Pete. 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 So there's my paint with Pete. Um, where are they? So it is a, obviously in reference to the logo and the stickers that we're making, but I'm doing it a little bit differently with a different purpose. So this is for the studio. Obviously the stickers are for everything else. So um, you'll get a sticker, a paint with Pete sticker, regarding uh, in anything you buy from me, from Obsolete. Um, there we are. So we're making a nameplate in reference to this, but I want your guy's name in it, okay? I'm gonna now draw it in. Just get this going, yeah, okay, lovely. Pete, where's that A? I'm gonna write with now. Yeah, I'm gonna, again, be careful with those over lines. This nibs a bit weird. Be careful with the lines as they go over. And just take a little bit of time if you need. Just to make sure you're drawing, that's why we're using pencil first. with so we get the rest of the words in okay and nearly there with the paint and again just watch and look in the the other beautiful thing about pencil lines is that you can see underneath your drawing. So if you need to put that extra line in to make it look like it's actually behind something, you can. I'm going to edit my T just a little bit. Paint. We're going to get Pete in now. We've got with. There's P. Again, you can see where that E line is. Nice work. Okay, cool. And then again, just watching, spotting the uh, pencil line. Nearly done.
There we are. Okay, so again, I'm just going to put X's where there should be spaces. I'm also wanting to add a few uh, details, so I'm going to put a heart, some ink splodges, uh, maybe a, a, a fat asterisk. All right, so let's do, uh, we'll do an asterisk, asterisk, asterisk here. Maybe another one up here. The heart. Another heart. The big heart here. Okay. Uh, something else in the corner. Another little drop. Because I'm not going to be cutting into this negative space, I can use it so we can fill it up a little bit just to make sure that it's balanced. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Four more minutes until brew time. So that's just enough time to take our piece off the wall and cut him out and add him to our menagerie of different nameplates. So I'm keeping that blue tight for him in a minute. So there we are, paint with Pete. I hope you've got paint with and then your name. You're part of the team now, I'm afraid. So again, with cutting, every time I've uh, used these scissors, I've mentioned it. Every little bit of art, every little technique and procedure, um, excuse me, is worth uh, taking your time over and kind of learning a little bit more. So there is always a kind of a process going on. You're already, uh, you know, always editing how you work, how you hold yourself, and also how you cut things out. So take your time. Never close the uh, the scissor, so never actually close the blade, and you'll get like an odd, nice, defined, abstract edge to your piece. So these shapes, I mean, even just uh, sorry if I'm going quiet, I'm concentrating. I have a blade in my hand, um, but so this kind of uh, outline shape. If you put it against a, a wall with colour on it, wallpaper, anything, the door, you know, fridge, it'll look good. It'll look strong, nice, monochrome. And obviously, like with the colour sessions yesterday, we did a bit of doodling on our heart. We did a doodle heart and then we coloured it in, chose four colours. You can do exactly the same with these. So if you are looking to extend the project, then you can colour it in. Choose a couple of colours. Fill it in, take your time, make sure you're sticking to those edges, or not, if you wanted. So yeah, just taking a bit of time, just to make sure my nameplate is nice and neat. You'll notice my other hand is nowhere near the scissors as well, so I'm just concentrating here and executing here. Okay, yeah, scissors go back on the scissor hook. Uh, blue tack can go back on. I'm just going to rub the uh, lines out so we can see it nice and clear. Blue tack's on. There we go. Okay. So that is the new paint with Pete nameplate. Where's he gone? There he is. Um, so we have a new nameplate for the studio. Just get some of these lines out. So you can see the structure lines behind it in pencil. But again, I hope you've all got a nameplate. It can be on A4, any size you want, even if it's like a little one, um, just to make sure that you know that you are in your studio. You are painting with me, but I am also painting with you. So if you've got yourself a little nameplate, it can be painted with, uh, you know, Sarah, paint with uh, Michael. Doesn't matter. Mike will probably fit better. There we go. 
Okay, so we can replace the obsolete now because we now have our branded nameplate, and it should fit. Ah, it should fit just about in there, but it doesn't. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there he is. You probably can't see him. He's probably just out of shot, but I know he's up there. So every time I'm in the studio in the paint with Pete's, I know where I am. I know what I'm doing. I'm into. I'm getting into my art mindset. It is exactly half ten, halfway through the show. We have a uh, brew time, so please grab yourself some water and some fruit and some uh, food, some fresh air if you do need to, all the yes. But when we come back, we are going to be diving back into this idea that by putting something up, by, by a visual reminder, you can then get into a certain mindset, you can uh, turn on your creativity. If you're having a bit of a bad day, it's a really good go-to. Excuse me. It's a really good go-to. Um, to kind of bring you back to that creative head. You know, it's like looking at a photograph of yourself at a festival or just any photo of you outside standing next to a human <laughs> at the moment. Um, it just reminds you of what you can do, where your head was, where you were as a creative, and it gets you back into that mindset, all right? So, we're gonna have a couple of minutes on brew time. I'll give some shout outs, say some hellos, uh, and then come back, but please be thinking of your nickname, please be thinking of a rap name or a graph name, right? I'm gonna think of a new one. So if you are watching, if you wanna come up with a nickname for me, please do, I've got a couple, uh, in my head at least. <laughs> I've been called a few things in my life. Um, but I've got a few nicknames that I've had uh, that have been used, that I've thought about using. Um, obsolete seems to sum me up very well, and obviously rhymes with Pete, so it's very nice to say, stays in your head and all that. So if you are thinking, if you haven't got a nickname, if you haven't uh, got a rap alter ego already, think of something that rhymes with your name. Paint with Pete obviously helps. Pete obsolete also rhymes. So that kind of uh, memorable and a very, very direct route to that mind, that headspace, that mindset of drawing and being creative and just doing whatever you like. Because that's what art can do, right? Pick one of these up, the world is yours, right? Okay, let's grab some more coffee, a couple more minutes. Lovely. Lovely stuff. So, hello, uh, everyone watching. Uh, I wanna say shouts again to Lady Erin um, and Noodle Nancy. Perfect nickname. Uh, shouts to Michael Woods as well. Thanks for sharing all the love, mate. Um, and obviously shouts to Mr. and Mrs. Barton every single time. Uh, Ethan and Harry, Rev Austin, everybody who watches. I um, absolutely love the audience and thank you so much for sending me your work. As I will say every time, please send me your work again. Um, I want to see some paint with whoever you are. And I also want to see your uh, rap or graph name, alter ego name, please. After we do the little 15 minute workshop that's coming up in two minutes, all right? So again, hope everyone's uh, being good, staying good, staying safe and staying creative. Uh, my name is Pete Obsolete, let's do that. Today I'm repping myself. Um, this is a very old t-shirt. I will be releasing uh, quite a few t-shirts in summer, so please wait for that. I've got a couple of canvases and a few ideas that I think uh, you might like. So stay tuned with Pete Obsolete. You can find me on Pete Obsolete and Obsolete Formats MCR on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram as P Obsolete and Obsolete Formats. P Obsolete is the kind of personality and the kind of commercial jobs. Obsolete Formats is more the kind of custom work, self-directed work, canvases, bits to sell, all that sort of stuff. You can find me on Twitter. I am Snob Ross, Snob underscore Ross. Love the pun, uh, if I do say so myself. Um, and also Obsolete Formats on YouTube. So if you have missed any of the shows, you can check out Obsolete Formats MCR or get on YouTube and everything is on there, full quality everything, um, on my page, Obsolete Formats on YouTube. There we are. Okie dokie. Got another minute of brew time. I'm gonna do another little hand warm up just before we get into our alter ego, okay? The idea of alter ego can suggest, um, has, you know, dark connotations sometimes, um, but if you imagine that most artists, obviously not everybody, but a lot of artists, certainly rappers and musicians, will go under a different name. So even if it is the name of their band and they have their normal name, you will know them for their band or their alter ego, much like, I'm probably gonna show them every day because I love this drawing, uh, MF Doom. So uh, MF Doom is an alter ego. He wears a mask that helps him get into that alter ego. I do similar things with obsolete. So 
you know, my name is Pete in the real world, but Pete Obsolete is an artist alter ego, so that means I can then become Pete Obsolete every day for every job I'm doing, whatever I want, um, and dive into that kind of head. So my working practices are exactly what we're doing in the, uh, the Paint with Pete at the moment. So very much kind of, um, you know, hand-drawn, everything's handmade, obsolete formats is the idea, so obsolete is obsolete means to be redundant or outdated. So I've admitted, I'm openly admitting that I'm obsolete, I'm not the youngest guy or the first artist to draw, um, so I know that there are other people in the world. It's a kind of strength, a gift and a curse uh, as obsolete. It's a bit of a joke, so the whole idea is that if I ever become obsolete, if I ever become redundant and unneeded, whatever, uh, then I've done everything I've ever set out to do. So it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy inverted, okay? Pretty deep, I'm sorry. If you want to just throw some alliteration in, Pete obsolete also rhymes and sounds good. So if you've got your own alter ego or it's a crazy nickname, if you've been called uh, thousands of uh, expletives run through my mind, <laughs> I've been called Monarch, Mini Man, um, and Obsolete, uh, Kingdom, Dondo, it's from a big monarch, you know, loads of different, loads of weird different names. Um, so if you ever have been given one of those names or you've had one yourself, this is your time. Let's stop talking, let's start drawing. So I'm going to get the big sheet out. There he is. So I'm going to write a big one, all right? I'm going to make a big A, excuse me, A2 sheet size one. But I need an alter ego. I need another one. So I'm kind of uh, thinking I might step away from Pete. Uh, okay, I was called Redbeard as well. One of my um, rapping alter egos is called Redbeard. So I'm going to be Redbeard today because my beard is red. Simple as that. Or kind of ginger or grey. <laughs> um, we'll do a Redbeard, okay? So I'm just going to make a big nameplate that said Redbeard. Uh, in fact, I'm going to give it a title. Let's think. I'm going to be really arrogant. Uh, use my use that rapper alter ego idea. It'll be called Redbeard the Great. Okay. So lean into it if you're uh, inclined. Put something at the end of it if it's uh, you know like Noodle Nancy for example. Uh, Noodle Nancy. Uh, you know I don't know. Uh, the nice dancer or something, something that rhymes and give yourself a little context. This is Redbeard in the world, um, has a pirate reference. Uh, my, it's just a half pirate, half kind of like old school Viking idea. Um, but I'm going to be called Redbeard the Great. So I'm going to get really arrogant. I'm going to use a nickname that I've given myself. Shouts to the Dead Kings, shouts to Seymour. Uh, and the Golden Egg Hip Hop family all day. Uh, Redbeard was one of my alter egos, so we're going to go Redbeard, and I'm going to go Redbeard the Great. Simple as that. Nice and uh, big, big boy, uh, nice and confident. Let's go. So it needs to be big and bubbly as well, so to reference both this and the kind of uh, the statement of the MC name, the rapper name. So Redbeard the Great, let's go. Ah. That's E. Bit bigger. I think that's enough space. Oh, let's take him back a little bit. There we go. Red. Okay, just talking to my piece. B. E. A. R. D. I think that's just. We're going to cut it out anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit squished up. I've got loads more. In fact, I'm just going to draw over it. Uh -huh. Using my whole page here, I didn't think I would, but I am. D. B. Way better. E A R D, good. E. A. R. D. Still a little bit squashed, but we can play with that in the edit. Red beard, the. Oh, okay. I'm going to be called. Uh, I'm going to change that. Great. I'm going to be. I'm going to rep Dead Kings. D E A D. That's too much. 
We'll stick with great. I'm, I'm playing with a few ideas. You can freestyle this. This is the whole idea. There's no rules. You don't have to stick to one idea. If you want to change it halfway through, more than welcome. Exactly what I'm doing. Um, I am going to re re um, return to the original idea of just the great, because I think Dead King is a little bit too long. Uh, and I'm already a little bit squashed up with a red beard. So let's do great. So G, good practice on the G as well. G. R. R. Yep. E. A. T. At the moment, it's just pencil lines. Loads and loads of pencil lines. I'll show you. So you can see that I'm even a, you know, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm drawing, but there's still a bit of a trial and error in the spacing. Will always happen, unless you're measuring out every single time, measuring the letters and working it out. Um, again, I don't want to be pushing that idea. You can do that if you are really, really, uh, if you want that uh, neatness. We're not really going for accuracy or, or neat. We just want to kind of practice working on our sheets on the different sizes that we've got, the size of our nib, and obviously pushing our pencil lines as well. So it's an experiment. We can go as big or as small as you want. And you don't have to be neat. That is not the game here. Okay. So I'm gonna ink him in. Let's just see what happens. Yep. Cool. So red beard the great. I might put an exclamation mark in that. Uh, and yeah, maybe another one. Is that? That's fine. Okay, let's leave that. Let's go. Ah, uh -huh. he's not lying. E. We're just following our lines. Simples. D is going to sit a little bit behind. R E D. So B. Again, behind a little bit. Watching out for the. Yep. We'll come back to that in a sec. That line can stay there. E. As A. Worry about the letters in a sec or the middle bits. R and D. Might be a little bit tight on this. And then D. Right up to the edge. And down. Okay, so there's red beard. Let's get the in. The, and we can now finish up B. This comes here again, we can see those lines. Let's get that E sorted. Anything else we need to do? There's a D there. Okay, and then great along the bottom. Nice and big, nice and confident. Follow those lines. G. R, just looking for those pencils, E, A and T. Okay, so we need to do the inner bits of the letters. Let's round them up. There we go. Okay, so X. 
X, X, X. Red Bear the Great. <laughs> uh, agreed. Um, okay, thank you so much um, for the comments. Good morning, Neil, uh, Miss Williams, official names only, I'm afraid. Good morning. Um, and Mrs. Barton, yeah, agreed. Um, the bubble font seems a little bit too soft for the word red beard. Um, again, that kind of the connotations of red beard are pirates in my world, like black beard or blue beard, red beard. Um, and also a little bit Viking, so that kind of it's more the honorable thing. I think like honor uh, code that kind of dictates, and again, the Viking link with a runic font style would really work. Have we got time? Yes, we've got time. Okay, I might do the red beard um, in, yeah, I'm gonna do it, screw it. Uh, so, we have got time. I'm just gonna cut red beard out. We need to add something, so I'm gonna put, uh, we have got time, we definitely have got time. Uh, you're gonna see me add a few more things to red beard the great. Then I'm going to do it in the rune font as well. I'm going to do it as oh, oh, oh. I'm going to do it as fat as I can, and then make a nameplate out of Redbeard the Great in the rune. So this is a, a callback. Shout out to Mrs. Dora and Mrs. Barton. Uh, to last week uh, when I asked for some suggestion name or words, descriptive words for the font. Mrs. Barton came up with runic, perfect for Pete obsolete. Um, apparently not perfect for Redbeard. I kind of agree, although. I do love this font. Okay, let's get some skull and crossbones in, why not, just to reference it. Uh, that's a, a badly drawn skull and crossbones. I'm going to do another one here. Uh, what else is a pirate? What else does pirates have? Um, well, draw a parrot. Let's draw a parrot. Again, call back to the first week. Amazing. Um, let's draw a little parrot here. Got a little parrot. He's waving. Um, what else we got? We could do an eye patch. Ah, oh, we could do it. I'm going to draw an eye patch going across the R, so it's a definite pirate reference. Okay, so let's do some uh, speed scissoring. Sounds like something very different in certain circles. Okay, so we're just gonna go straight in and uh, cut the uh, cut our nameplate out. Thank you for the uh, immediate suggestion. Love my love the audience members. I keep saying my like it's some sort of possessive, like a negative possession uh, trait or something. Um, I absolutely love the audience for the Penguin Pete sessions. Your suggestions and ideas make the session. Thank you so much for getting involved every single time. I'm also thinking of setting up a specific page for Paint with Pete, same with the Instagram, and potentially YouTube as well. Um, so let me know if you think that's a good idea. It only started as a, if you want to watch me paint, please join me. Um, a year later, or just under, crazy enough, and we're still here, amazing, love you guys. Oh yeah, weirdly as well, um, I don't know if there's any sort of connotation to the skeleton crew. We drew the skeleton crew on Monday, so again this kind of, like the handwriting practice, we weren't taking our pen off the page, we were just drawing 20 different skulls. And I explained that they were called the skeleton crew. So if you ever see a skeleton, uh, it's not the necessarily the, the darker um, links or the kind of references or connotations to death or anything. It's all about rebirth and the skull being part human. But also, 
the idea of the skeleton crew. So every skeleton that I've ever drawn is part of a crew called the skeleton crew. Obviously in shipping or naval or pirate based world, um, the skeleton crew meant uh, the smallest amount of people who would be needed to operate a ship. The ship is the obsolete format. I am the uh, skeleton crew captain and my alter ego is Redbeard the Great. Spot the pirate, we've got some uh, skull and crossbones and an eye patch just to link it all back in with the pirate idea. Okay, so the uh, immediate suggestion that we're going to do now, I'm going to try and do it in a rune. So I'm going to get another sheet of paper up, so bear with me two minutes. Uh, I wasn't expecting to do this, it's an absolutely f ab perfect uh, swap for what I had planned, absolutely fine. We were basically just going to develop these a little bit and uh, add some pictures in, but it's lettering day, so let's stick with lettering. Redbeard the Great can go up, if I can find where I put the blue sack. So we've now got Redbeard the Great, as well as, oops, ah, oh, there's some more, no? wrong. Let's get these guys back up. So we've got a full wall of writing. I love it when my studio looks like this. Um, the black and white is one of my favorites. Obviously we all love color as well, but there we are. Okay, so one more, we're gonna do a rune. Um, and we're going to do our red beard in the rune. So I'm just thinking how I'm going to do that. Okay, let's do that. Sorry, throw a curveball. Might take a minute to prove it. Um, this paper is absolutely incredible. Uh, as well as the cast art cartridge, uh, I use the Dado and Rowney. I think it's 220. Yeah, 220 GSM. Super, super smooth heavyweight. Yeah, beautiful. I absolutely love the uh, design as well. This looks really good. So that's what today's paper is. Okay, so red beard, just processing. You can probably see a little uh, coloured wheel on my forehead while I'm loading. Um, if not, I'm sure you can probably hear the cogs ticking. I'm just thinking how I want to approach it. So basically, um, oh, okay. Okay, we'll do that. So I'll show you what my reference point will be and I'll show you how I'm going to approach it and where we're going to go with it. So he can just sit there. A comfortable height for me to draw and write. I say write because, uh, I mean, my OCD kicks in and tells me this is really off center. So uh, please don't, <laughs> don't let me know. I know, uh, this was a rune. This was the very, very first obsolete uh, runic um, or the final version of the runic font. So this is the obsolete rune, uh, origin of the species. I used this pen right here, literally. It was quite an old pen, so it tore, and there were little effects in that. I haven't added these, it's just the organic nature of these pens when they start to run out. Um, I'm gonna write red beard, like this. I'm gonna practice it a few times small, and then I'm gonna try and draw it up big with the tears in it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my drawing and my pencil work to, to imitate this I'm not gonna just draw it and then cut around it, I'm gonna draw it, like physically draw it out. Okay, two seconds. Let's have a little think and get some turn this while we're doing it. Okay, cool. So it's gonna be here. I'm gonna write red beard in the rune here, but I just wanna uh, see what it looks like a few times. Uh, I completely agree, Mrs. Barton. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, yeah, that looks cool. Okay, I'm going to go with the first one. I don't think I have time. Uh, I don't think I have time to do what I planned. There's only six minutes left and it will take probably a good 10 minutes to get the uh, the rune right. So I'm gonna throw all my caution to the wind, grab my big black pen, and we're just gonna write it. I'm gonna try and get it as close to this as I can in one line. That's all one line. You probably saw me write it in one line and we'll cut it out and see what it looks like in the rune. We did do be kind. Um, I think I ended up tearing, I'm sorry. Um, so we did the be kind in the, in the bubble and the rune, 
We're gonna do red beard in the room. So. Interesting. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So guys, just deciding what's uh, what's happening with my nibs. Okay, cool. You go on there. Lovely. Uh, make sure your caps are always on your pens. Always double check. It's the first rule of art club. Okay. Get them nice and juicy. Lovely. Okay, so red beard. Nice and big. We're going to cut them out as well. Put down there. That was wrong straight away. I can't spell. <laughs> That's really annoying. I've got different words in my head, and because my B's look a little bit like my E's, my brain trips a little bit there and starts running E instead of a B. Practice makes every time, everybody. We all get it done. Two seconds. Mr. Blue Tie, Mr. Blue Tie, lovely. Okay. Right on. So, I was uh, deciding on whether to use a round nib or a wedge nib. So a round nib is just like a ballpoint pen, but super fat. Uh, and obviously the wedge nibs are like square, square nibs um, that have a little bit of a kind of accent in them. I'll show you that in a sec. Nice and neat again, just taking my sweet time about it. So just gently imagining a border around the letters, that's called a stroke. So we're just going around, gently cutting out our very angular uh, red beard in the room. Again, you can see me concentrating, sorry guys. Just want to make sure we're getting all of those uh, pen lines in, all the little kind of accents and details. Okay. Okay, so just about to finish up here. Last couple of lines, as it were. So, red beard and red beard. I didn't write the great, I should have probably written the great, shouldn't I? Just for a continuity more than anything, but I'm sure your imaginations are already there. So, and there is red beard without any blue tag. My blue tag hates me, I swear. <laughs> This paper's too smooth, I think, literally. So there's red beard. Okay, just a little sip of coffee. So we covered a, a few different bits today. Some of it you can see, some of it you can't. So we went from our block letters into our bubble font again. I'll do that every week. I want to make sure everybody can draw. We'll do the alphabet again next week. Um, I want to make sure everybody can draw this font. Uh, I'm going to switch it and say that this will be the font you can download. I will, I'm going to design this completely so you'll be able to download this font um, at the end of the sessions. Give us a couple of weeks to sort it out and I'll make sure we can all download it and you can use it whatever. We went from block to bubble, block to bubble, 
couple of examples. After, some handwriting practice. So we just wrote a sentence, your name, I wrote obsolete has you, the ethos um, of obsolete. We graduated it, so we got bigger and wider. Really good confidence practice that, genuinely. We then also did our paint with uh, nameplate. So I hope you've all got one of these. Please take a photo of yours if you have. Um, paint with, and then your name. My name is Pete, hello. Um, so I did paint with Pete. I haven't done one of these yet for the sessions. He is now my official title. I've probably got black ink all over my nose, sod. Um, so he's going back up there so we know what we're doing and what the session is. If you've got one as well, put it in the, the place where you draw, on the table, in the front room, wherever. And then one, every time we get into paint with Pete, you can put it up and we're in the studio. Exactly the same as me. The next thing we did, I came up with an alter ego. So I, I followed Red Beard. It was a name I gave myself because I have a big ginger beard. Well, I'm very, it's a lockdown beard, so you have to apologize for it. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jersey Street, they're my barbers. Um, we did Red Beard the Great. I added some uh, icons like a parrot and some uh, pirate a pirate flag or Jolly Roger just to make sure there was a pirate link and then thank you to the audience and Mrs Barton as ever uh, for the suggestion of doing the red beard in the rune after uh, playing around with my pens a bit too long we did our rune so again one line pretty much in a black font a black pen and we cut it out and you can go on our word wall so all these have been created in the sessions if you want to see us draw them if you need a bit of hand a bit of a a bit of a hand with the practicing and the kind of evolution of developing a font, please check out Obsolete Formats MCR on Facebook, hello, or Obsolete Formats on YouTube. Um, all the shows are named for the show that they are. So if you want to deep dive into that, please have a look. It's a nice little creative hour every morning. Okay, it's just gone 11 o'clock. Thank you so much for joining me on this Wednesday for Lettering Day. Uh, I have been Pete Obsolete and I am here to say stay safe and stay creative. Peace and love, everybody.